You are tuned to Janet Zenith Cablevision. Thank you for watching. It's time for talk. Each evening at this time, Monday through Friday, Rosemary interviews local personalities and others who bring items of interest to this community. Time for Talk is a community betterment service designed to cooperate with our local community betterment program. Tonight, Rosemary takes us by means of portable camera out of our studios and maybe into your neighborhood. And now... It's time for talk. As you know, we've been working on uh, uh, the extension uh, 412. Uh, they're making it four lane all the way. And so we decided we'd come up and look for uh, any records they may have of the very beginning of the very first road when it was Highway 84 or maybe even it didn't have a number. It's late afternoon and we're in the offices of the Daily Dunklin Democrat. We've been going back through some archives and we have pulled a book, 1918. We were specifically looking for items of interest about when they first began to talk about the road from here to Carothersville. Of course, it was swampy land, it was terrible and uh, we have words from some of the gentlemen who wrote about it at that time that uh, it would mire a snipe. And here, from August 2nd, 1918, you'll be glad to know that the death knell for the bull weevil, you, the bull weevil is doomed, or is the very first line. The hand of science at last has a death grip on the insidious insect which has spread havoc over the vast cotton fields of the South. Now here it is, 2002, almost a hundred years later, and we're still battling the boll weevil. Well, we came to the end of December in 1918, and we have only had the two articles. Now I have no idea if they did a, a grand opening or uh, but there is. We came along and we were going to look in 1919 and see what we can find. Mm -hmm. The first item of interest about roads we find March 14, 1919. 1919 now in March. Good roads meeting to be held here Monday in the circuit courtroom. And it's they're going to discuss the proposition of building hard roads. Now, evidently, what we've been reading about using convict labor, they must have built just, I don't know if they were dirt, I don't know if they were gravel, but now we're talking about hard roads uh, and how we need to take advantage of that. And then one week later, they report on that meeting and they say much interest shown at the good roads meeting. Uh, they're going to draw up petitions asking the county court to order an election. And when it comes down in the uh, main article, it was pointed out that now is the proper time to act in the matter of getting hard surfaced roads. So we're meeting, we're reading about hard surfaced roads. It's possible to get state and government aid at the present equal to the amount expended by the township. And if not taken advantage of while available, it might not be possible to get help later on. The state and the United States governments propose to put up an equal amount for building permanent roads. And then they talk about um, if we do not, uh, other places are going to get the money. And when we do awaken to the importance of hard roads, we'll have to build ours from our own resources, paying double and how it's gonna benefit the farmers, and of course it will. So March 21st, 1919, we really got excited about hard roads from here to Carothersville. We've been looking through some of the archives of the Daily Dunklin Democrat concerning roads in Dunklin County, specifically when Highway 84 West might have been begun. We found some things in 1918, but in March 21st, 1919, here in this Dunklin County news, much interest shown. The citizens uh, are getting busy on their committees. And you read about uh, many of them came out to talk about good roads. You read about Judge C.C. Redmond 
Uh, he has a copy of all the road measures, and, uh, and there was nothing in any of them that, after giving them study, which would make the road law any better than the ones we now have. They, they list some of the men in Dunklin County, and then they say this is the time to get the matter of hard surfaced roads. These are hard surface. Now, evidently, convict labor did the early roads, and now they want to come back with a hard surface. And uh, we have an, uh, a letter written about this time by Judge C.C. Redmond, and we'll bring you that at a later date. It's very interesting, his account of, of getting this road across here. We're looking through the archives at the Daily Dunklin Democrat. We came back specifically to look for items about the road when it was built from here to Carothersville across the swamp lands. And we have found several articles. Of course, this being 1919, most of this issue is filled with soldiers who are returning. And uh, the war is over and everyone is happy. And of course, you see on this the, the battle tank. But items of interest I thought this one was an interesting thing for a front page. Kennett is to have a ladies' restroom. The ladies' restroom for Kennett is assured and will be opened the 1st of May. The county court has appropriated $50 a month and the merchants of the city have pledged $100 a month for the upkeep. So it's going to cost $150 a month to keep up a restroom. This is in 1918. The Panky Building on the east side of the square has been secured for this purpose. There will be a parcel room, a room with beds, oh, a toilet room, and a general restroom, well supplied with comfortable rockers. And a matron will be in charge between 8 and 6 every day. And effort will be made to make the restroom as pleasant and homelike as possible for the many ladies and children of the county and city. So it's more than just a restroom. thought that was interesting. Um, and the necessity for that probably was brought about that all of the farm people came into this county seat, especially on Saturday. It was a big day, and there was, you know, you came on a wagon, and, and there was no place to go to the bathroom, so it was a, a real necessity. May 30th, 1919. We're really getting going on hard surfaced roads. The state engineer was here, and he's advising everybody about the, the road law and the road construction. Um, it had been the idea all along, even by men who had given thought to road building, that nothing but concrete roads would do on the sand, through which more miles of our road run than any other kind of soil. And this way of building roads has been investigated, and it was found the cost would be so enormous it would make the levy on the properties for taxes was so heavy, but Mr. Murray told us that was wrong. There were other ways of making roads in Sandy Section. And he said that clay and gravel uh, properly graded would make a good hard road, and, um, and they still talk about concrete roads. And he explained it would be no good to attempt to build roads with ordinary wash gravel such as used in making concrete roads, that this would disappear in the sand quickly. But he pointed out the clay gravel had binding qualities and would hold and form a perfect hard surface. So we have alternatives suggested here. I found something on July 11. June 27, let's see about July 11. July 11th, 1919, they're going to ask the people to vote a road bond issue. And let's have a big attendance at this meeting. And the club also appointed C.C. Redmond, chairman of the township board, to go before the State Highway Commission and arrange for the $1,200 per mile of state aid due to Kennett. $1,200 a mile for this road of state aid. This amount should be available at once. It's been laid down, designated, and a pretty good road already constructed. Mm -hmm. August 8, 1919, the cost of the road bond issue to taxpayers is small, and farm owners will pay less than average of seven cents an acre. 
small cost in taxis compared with the value of the improvement. And uh, they give all the real estate assessments and the personal property and how much, uh, uh, how many thousands of dollars uh, will be raised from this, these assessments. For some reason, on August 15th, the road bond election was postponed. Uh, talks about the assessment for the year 1916 must be used as a basis for voting road bonds. And so there was some, some problem. So uh, it was postponed. But let's see what happens in the next few weeks. Of course, as we go through here, you find out that, that they're drilling for oil up around Campbell. We've seen article after article. And um, here's five acres in the best part. And you're going to put a well down on this tract, and you're invited to, to buy stock in an oil well. The September 5th, 1919, our end of the Carothersville Road near completion. Judge C.C. Redman is the superintendent on the building of the bridge on the West Ditch on the Kennett Carothersville State Road. A uh, 44 foot approach and they give all the specifics. The Pemiscot County convicts who are working on this road have their camp at the junction of this road and are working west toward the county line. Uh, when it's possible, when this is finished, it will be possible to go from Kennett to Hayti and Carothersville over a fairly good dirt road by way of Bragg City. There is also a road open oh, south. Hmm? Oh, by way of Bragg City. Now, this is amazing to me. Um, when this is finished, it will go from Kennett to Hayti and Carothersville over a fairly good dirt road by way of Bragg City. Now, I think they must come along later then and do the hard surface road that they've been talking about. I'm a little confused about what they were doing. But I found on October the 10th, an interesting article. Now, there's very little between now and then. Now, here's an article that says makes first trip in car over the Kennett Carothersville Road. Others have crossed the swamp east of here from Hayti to Kennett and from Kennett to Bragg City and other points, but TV Schoonover and Mr. Brewer, one of the guards at the prison road camp, claim the honor of being the first to make the trip actually over the Kennett Carothersville State Highway from Bragg City to Kennett. He drove a Ford car, uh, and it's a pretty rough in some places, he said, but the trip could actually be made in a Ford. He has said there's a reward offered for the first to make the trip, and if so, he and Mr. Brewer are entitled to it. Uh, so, there's no fanfare, there's no public opening, and in the rest of the paper we've gone through, no big deal. What was amazing to us is without any fanfare, you open up a road that has been anticipated for years. As I take it, it is not really hard surface yet. Um, it's rough in some places, but they actually made the trip in a Ford car. We turn all the way to the end of 1919. And there is, is no news about the opening of the road. There's just nothing else said about it. Somebody drove a Ford car over it in October, and that's all we know. So evidently, the hard surface is yet to come. You have been watching Time for Talk. Time for Talk is a community betterment service designed to cooperate with our local community betterment program. Each evening, Monday through Friday at this time, Rosemary interviews local personalities and others who bring items of interest to this community. If you are aware of items of interest, please let us know for possible airing on this program. Time for Talk is brought to you through the cooperation of Kennett Cable Vision Incorporated and is produced through the facilities of the Slicer Street Church. The Holy Scriptures come alive. Coming up next, stay tuned.